All right, so this is the right side door. I have the patch panel for it. I just got the patch panel today. I ended up getting the AutoCraft one. Some of the AutoCraft stuff fits, some of it doesn't. So, you know, uh, we're still figuring out some of the ones that don't fit. We noticed that the, the single cab lower corners, not so much. Um, if you're doing them both, maybe it'll work, but um, they were off pretty far. They sent them back. Wellsburg West sent a whole bunch of them back to AutoCraft. So there was an issue with them. I don't know if it was on the complete corner, the bottom corner edge. I don't know. But they had an issue. I heard about it. But anyway, got this one here for the left side door because I was going to get the Gerson one. Uh, but they sent me the wrong one. And I just haven't been able to get the other one. So I just said, forget it. It's only a couple dollars more. I'll just go ahead and grab this one. Um. I could make them a lot of times if I have a good pattern I can make it um, I actually had the left side good pattern but I didn't have the right side good pattern so it was easier for me to just buy it already made uh, they're like 30 bucks on uh, uh, at um, Gerson right now it could be when you watch the video there will be more I don't know so, what I'm gonna do is mark my do not cut line so I got my sharpie here I do not want to cut at that line. I want to cut below it a good solid half inch or so. All right. And I can actually use this panel if I want with the plasma cutter. Mm, it's a little tough to do, isn't it? Uh, but if I just run my plasma cutter right along here, it'll be much easier to do. And then I'll take my grinder and grind this edge here. Well, you guys are looking at the wrong place. Let me get you guys right where you're supposed to be. Um, I'm going to grind, pick the grinder, go along this edge, and so that this piece will overlap. If you see here, with uh, with the door door uh, skin tool or with the hammer and dolly, either one, or if you want to use pliers you can even do that and then you'll have some damaged metal to repair on the other end but um, you can drill holes and weld it if you want or you can actually use panel adhesive or some guys even use just um, plain um, uh, seam sealing adhesive so see if I can get a good contact here It's easier with a good steel edge, but that's the that'll work. On this one, I'm going to go ahead and do the whole thing. A lot of times I won't. Sometimes I'll just cut off the piece I need. That's because this rolled edge right here is really bad. So I thought underneath here you can see the rolled edge is pretty bad it's got water that got underneath it so I'm gonna go ahead and do the whole thing all right good old funky green sorry about the news alert noise alert I'm not trying to buy the sound when it's going to go. Just by listening to it, you can hear the two pieces of metal separate. Let's try the other side. Well, noise alert again. Thank <laughs> you. 
There it is. That's how you get those off. It's the easiest way. And then just peel off the inner skin there. And see, then when you have one that's in good shape, of course, the bottom edges just run out. You can take this and make a nice pattern. I was going to do that on this side because it was just pitted down here and I had a pattern from this I could just take this over to the sheet metal roller and um, make you know this shape and get this little thing here and then uh, it's easy to trace that and make the same thing but since I the one side it was so it was like way up here for most of it it's just easier to buy the piece um, so and when they're only 30 bucks, it's not bad. It's not worth doing. It's worth doing if you get the ones from Funky Green Panels. They're cheap. A little more money at Wolfsburg West. Um, but since they sent me the wrong one, I didn't really order this side. I was going to do this and make it. Um, then I just go ahead and bought that one from Wolfsburg. I'll go ahead and show you guys a little bit about this too. Um, just to remove these, sometimes you use a hammer and chisel. break the spot welds. See if it breaks it this way. And then just roll it off. It can spam. Sometimes. That was a little odd there, isn't it? There is a spot weld right there. So they had a few spot welds, but not that many for these things. Most of it's just on there the way it is. Show you guys this side real quick. See this one? See that little spot weld right there. Like I said, there's some some spot welds on these. They didn't just crimp them on. There's not very many. Pinch weld. Well, that's a problem. Usually this is sharp. Here's my favorite chisel. This has been with me since 30 years, probably. Yeah, it's a little mushroom, wouldn't you say? Yeah. I'm not wanting to cooperate, is it? Well... Get out the pair of pliers here and see if it works its way off. I don't want to bend up my edge too much, but break it off somehow and then roll it. That's how I usually do it. Roll it like a can of spam, guys. Just like a can of spam. Some guys might not even know what that's like. We have spams with the lids on them now, or little pull tabs. You just have to roll it like this. Well, may need to cut this off. I'll bring you guys back in. I think you get the idea. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't.
I'd say that's pretty close. You know, there's a wider gap here there was before, if you guys remember. And then it's about right down here. Um, you know, it could be the dog leg is a little low or something, but you know, I'm not gonna. It, it's probably the shape of this is not exactly right. And you can sit there and play around and reshape all this stuff and just fit it so that all your lines are perfect. If that's what you want to do, I'm not going there. I'm not looking for that. So I just tacked it in place with enough tack so that it'd be down tight. Okay. And then what I'll do now is I'll go through and I'll put in all, remember I tell you guys half inch on center, a lot of welds, grind them all off, um, lap it, fill it and knock it down first. Lap it, fill it, done. That's the way I do it. I've been doing it that way for years. It turns out great. And, you know, I've got to just knock this little corner a little straighter. It's kind of eared out just a little bit. And then uh, that's how you, that's how I do it. I've been doing it for years, and it works great. The patch panel on that is pretty nice. Really nice to have. Um, I think the last few of them, I made them. But they weren't quite as bad as this one. So it's a little easier if you buy them. It, when they're less than 50 bucks, it's... It's it's not much of a decision to make when it's more than fifty dollars when it's more than seventy five dollars that's when you kind of go eh, you know maybe I can make that if you can't if you can you can make any, anything it just takes a lot more time it just depends on the time and money you want to spend um, it's up to you all right check it out we'll just weld this up right, one more thing before I weld it uh, remember it is butted right here to with this panel so I'm gonna weld all the way through and I'm going to spot probably weld almost all the way up to this weld here because that's a stress point and then remember what I said you uh, what I, the, the cut goes straight across so I angle up and then go over from the butt angle up and then go over that's the way we did it in the old days unfortunately the video didn't come out with me shrinking this so I had to heat this up along the uh, double edge double stack metal and shrink it so that um, it's now a little bit low. It was actually just a hair high, and if it's a hair high, then you're gonna have an issue with your Bondo. If it's if it follows that line right there, it could actually, the movement in the two metal layers could crack. So you always want that a little bit low um, to make sure that that doesn't happen. Uh, you know, it may not even happen, but I still do it anyway. Um, I always do it that way, because I don't want to have that problem. Uh, in the old days back when you know, we used to have to torch weld stuff, you know, and you either had a torch or you had an arc welder. You didn't have both um, MIG and arc. So, you know, uh, now you have everything, you know, you have MIG welders, TIG welders, arc welders. Uh, I could have butt welded this with a TIG welder, uh, but then I would be kind of talking over a lot of people's heads, wouldn't I? So I want to try and um, do things that, you know, on this job that... Um, you guys can relate to and that you guys could do yourselves so um, I did just heat this up with a torch and knocked it down with a shrinking hammer unfortunately the video footage came out so terrible uh, sometimes my camera it does this little flashing thing if you have seen some of my videos and uh, I had to delete it it was just too bad it was really bad so anyway that's where we're at now I'm ready to fill it um, I'm just gonna go ahead and just grind up this a little bit because I did get this wet I just want to grind it to just knock off any possibilities of rust. So any little bit of surface rust underneath the bondo would be a problem. Eventually it'll start to turn to rust. All right, so we'll mix up some filler. I'll do this in real time since I haven't done that really. Um, anyway, it's this one, one of the disadvantages of this filler is it just doesn't spread that great. It's, I've used other fillers that were really good spreading, but this thing, this stuff sands so easy that it um, really makes up for the fact that it doesn't spread the greatest. It's kind of chunky and I don't know, it's kind of weird. It just doesn't go down as easy. On this flat surface, it shouldn't be that bad, but compared to other, I've used the cheapest fillers sometimes and they've actually spread better than this stuff does, but um, it does like the pinhole you know um, but it, it's not that bad it's just a little bit of pinholes and uh, some guys a little bit of pinholes is just too many so uh, if you like if you're not like if you don't like that then try the AG 47 
that one does spread a little bit better it's a little bit harder to sand I mean not much but just a little bit and um, so if you if you're you know that kind of person looking for no pinholes see it's just kind of lumpy it goes on kind of funky it's kind of weird love the filler though I, I, I'll use this all day long but because it sands so fast but if you're you know like Evercoat gold or something like that that stuff spreads really nice and smooth and easy um, the finish of the spread of this is kind of if you look at it it's kind of looks like cheap filler but it actually sands like like uh, rage so really fast sandy <clears throat> anyway guess that'll do that and then the rest on the inside I'm gonna seam seal um, some of you guys are gonna wonder about that um, I'm not gonna uh, go through and weld it it's actually really well on there um, this metal wrapped really good um, the this is the stuff from Europe and I, I don't know where they get their formulation of their steel but it actually works really well so it actually goes down I don't know there's there's a difference in steel from one place to another. You'll see if you do a lot of metal work, you get ones that sand, the ones that weld really easy, and then this one welds really easy, and it it goes down really nice. And I got a little bit thicker coat of filler on here than I did on the other ones, the other pieces I did. I didn't get very much filler on there at all. So two coats of those other on those other panels is really not much. This one will take two always, you know, I never can get it in one. The lowest part's gonna take two. So, anyway, that'd be that. It's easier to get this off now, but not really. On this filler, it's just, you can, it's weird. You gotta try it. If you haven't tried this one yet, this one is uh, Auto Art um, Euro Gold. Uh, by Auto Art, they, Auto Art makes paint. So they they have a place in Riverside, uh, one stop paint and body supplies in Riverside. They have Auto Art products. They have uh, and they're pretty darn good for an American made product. They're really really similar to um, R M, Glasserit. You know some of those. Those of you guys are wondering about paint, um, Tamco. They have the best products for very inexpensive she has the formula for l87 pearl white and honestly um i touched it right there just a dot touch you guys can see that there's very little difference i mean a, a lot of the ones i've gotten like valspar's match to it honestly it was terrible it was like yellow compared to this this is looks like right dead nuts to pearl white very close um camco go to their website you can't beat their prices honestly um and, and their products are really right up there with glasserit rm premium products from rm um, they use all um uh, basf basf resins so basically you know it's it's basically you know very similar to those high-end products and about a, a tenth of the price of their products and probably cheaper than most of the paints you can get locally so if you're doing a restoration VW you got an L87 check them out man tell her you might have to call her on it and tell her I need L87 but she can make it up for you um, you have to actually probably call and order that um, texting sometimes is better for them because they work okay they're, they're a small company and they actually work so um, you might text them and say hey I need L87 Pearl White she'll text you back a price blah 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 finally they'll call you guys will call and meet and then you know, make your you know she'll give you a price on it it's it, you know for mixed colors they have really good stuff so I don't know what other VW colors have they have I don't know what other however how close they are um, but uh, this one I think is right on the money so anyway, this is almost dry. I mean, it's almost to the first sand dry, but 
still got that little stickiness to it. I'll bring you guys back in. We'll sand this down. It, it is going to need to be ground out just a little bit further. Probably need to fill out to about right here, just from experience. I, I just did that just for the first coat, and then I'll probably just knock it down with 40 real quick like I do. I don't really have to do that with this filler. You could just sand this right now with, with uh, 80 or 60, and uh, it sands so fast, really fast sanding. Uh, it really sands better with 150, but um, just to knock it down, it does sand okay with the heavier grit. All right, so if you see here, this sanded off in about 10 seconds with the DA and 40. If you catch it right at that right time, when it's just starting to set, you can just knock it off real fast with a DA. You don't even need to use the polisher. Like sometimes I just use the polisher just for the heck of it. You can see it's kind of cheesy still, you know. Or just to just pass that point where it won't load up on the paper, it just loads up a little bit. And then I'm ready for another coat. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit this area over here. Um, I checked this. It's, it was only pitted from the outside. There's no rust on the inside. Um, the, the rust that was here kind of did get a little bit between the layers. I'm going to, I did put some stuff in there. Um, it doesn't look like it's, the metal's bad enough to want to remove it. So some of that stuff I'm just going to fix, you know, it all depends on what you want to do. Um, I would not remove this. It just, you'll see on the other one, it's going to be a difficult task and it doesn't need to be done. There's really no reason. It's all treated. The rust is dead. Um, then I'll seam seal the edge so the water, water won't go back in there. And I'll, I've already coated it with the rust preventer. You can see all this right here. Um, that's all going to get sanded off, but I'm just showing you so that you know that that's all done. And then uh, I'll paint that and I'll actually, I'm going to I'm going to paint inside there and I'm going to let runs go down in here to just coat this whole area so that it doesn't, no rust will come again. Use uh, rust preventive, uh, rust uh, inhibitive enamel. You, know, you can use whatever you want. You can use pour 15. You can use that. It doesn't really need to be done when you have already got that primer. Just rust inhibitive enamel is fine. All right, so I got the second coat of filler. Got that area filled. That's just a one fill. No problem. It's very, very, it's just a little tiny bit wavy. I uh, should be able to sand this off, have it looking good. All right, so I got one spot on this inner door, like right here, that was too high. So what I'm going to do is just heat that up and uh, knock it down. It's easier, a little easier to do when it's hot, so I'm just going to do that real quick. And then... Uh, I don't know if I'll have to refit it. I may be able to take a straight edge and just kind of walk it around and make sure it's low. So we'll do that real quick. All right, so we'll just heat this guy up. I'll just heat up a little bit, do some heat shrink. It's just a little bit of shrinkage. It's just a little easier to do with it. All the metal's hot. Try to hit it a corner like that. It's a little hard to do, so. You could use a propane torch for this too if you wanted. Well, let's knock that uh, sucker down a little bit. Sure, that's going to do it about right here. One more. You guys know what I mean. All right, so we're all shrunk down there. Should be just, just right. All right, I don't know if we just got treated underneath here, so I go ahead and clean that up a little bit and treat it all. All right, so after it's all wire brushed out, I just do this stuff here. And if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. I'm gonna see some stuff that you might not see other places. Some people say, oh, it's Mickey Mouse, whatever, that's fine. You can say whatever you want, but you know what? It works. It lasts. It looks good. What else do you want? You don't want the world, you know? I mean, it's like, who are you restoring the car for? You or the next three generations of people or, you know, I mean, 
who are you who are you doing it for? You know. So my question is, well, I want it to last forever. Well, guess what? Nothing. I don't care who does it. Nothing lasts forever. Nobody's job will last forever. It's only going to last X amount of years, whatever that is. It could last longer, but then again, you know, why are you paying for somebody else's lifetime of work? You aren't going to live forever. Everybody dies at some point, unfortunately. I'm going to show you guys a little of how quick this filler goes. Just so you can see the sanding. Noise alert. The stupid panel would stay on the sand. sandpaper for the next grit. So that was 40, this is 60. Switch to one one fifty. Just get a quick quick blow off. Double cheat.
If your filler is taking longer than that to sand, you need to switch filler. The cheap stuff doesn't sand like that, okay? If you use the cheap, the good filler, it sands 10 times as fast as the cheap stuff. Um, AG47, this one I'm using is called, uh, it, 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 Evercode has Rage, which sands like this too. Um, and also your, uh, I, I'm using the, uh, Auto, Auto Art Euro Gold, which is about thirty-one dollars, compared to, you know, Rage, which is, you know, fifty-eight bucks. This stuff is just as fast sanding. Um, yeah, it, and people go, well, you can use a DA, your body doesn't I used to paint Mercedes, BMWs in the shop. I never used to. And when you hit the metal, it dulls your paper, so I gotta change this one. Every time you hit the metal. One little, little high spot right there, so. Anyway. Might do a little touch up to it. It's gonna take me a little while to feather the edge. It takes longer to feather the edge than to actually do the filler. All right, so I'll talk to you guys in the next one. So I got a little dent right here. There's no access to the other side of it. I'm gonna do this little spot welder. They had these Arbor Freight tools for about a hundred bucks. Um, they used to be five hundred dollars when I was young. Now they're only a hundred bucks. Mine has some issues, so it's it's pretty old. I've used it a lot, you know, and it. They don't last very long, the Harbor Freight ones. Maybe it just needs to be cleaned or something. But I have trouble with it. You know, when I put it, put the, I have to hold it down a long time. When guys are like, oh man, you're gonna, you're getting it too hot. And it's like, dude, if I don't do it this long until it shuts off, it, um, it won't hold. So anyway, they say, you need to only hold it for like 10 seconds. It's like, yeah, well, that's yours, not mine. Mine is old, so. See, that one didn't even hold, did it? Gotta really hold it there for a while. This old fella. It's got a lot of use. So anyway, that's the deal on that. Uh, a little noise alert here, guys. This thing comes with it too. If you get these Arbor Freight, they work all right. You can actually use grab a hold of the little thing and you can grab a hold of the pin and stuff like that and kind of pull it up with pliers. Or you don't have to just use the slide hammer. Really hard to do this on camera. Fortunately, it works great when I'm not on camera, right? There we go. Point one. I'm just cramping my style with you guys sitting there. 
don't mind. I need one right here too where I was starting. So, yeah, you can take those off. You just take them off like this. Put one. Well, see, I burned a hole in it. And that's the problem with this old spot welder. It just doesn't. So, I'll have to weld that up, but uh, I'll put one right here, right here, and we'll check it out in a minute. Sorry, it's supposed to be called a stud welder. I don't know. I just use it. Um, they have a unit spotter. It's different. Um, that actually, you uh, put it puts on there, and then you can put all these different little tools on there. You actually weld a little tit on the top of a welder. Those things even work better if you have one of those. They're kind of expensive though. A little all right. cut here. Okay. Noise alert. I'm going to call that okay. It's just a little bit low, lower than I usually would play with it, but it's on a round area. It'll, it's not going to take much filler still. Less than, a, less than an eighth of an inch. Little filler on there. All right, so it's going to be second verse, same as the first on this. Got to trim this edge. Remember, go at an angle this way and an angle that way. Make it so it butts up against here, butts up against right there and uh, get that one on. Thank you. 
that looks got the filler and primer didn't do really anything else other than what I showed you guys in the sanding part to this to make it look like that so all right so this one here's in place we got a little bit of issues with the lineup on the bottom corner over here you can see that's hanging out uh, there's a couple ways to correct that I could actually just put a block of wood under this edge knock it over hammered punch under here um, or a little bit of filler it's really not that far off it looks like a lot worse than it is and yeah you know, it's gonna set about right here with it and I'm just gonna say good to go what do you guys say I'm just gonna go for it and then you know if I when I get done if I wanted to I could actually touch it up and fill it or fix it or whatever there's you know, sometimes you start making too many decisions before you get to the finish of the job and you're kind of like, you end up, you know, going back and making yourself wonder why you did it. But um, it's sometimes it's easier to, I could correct that a lot of different ways. So I could knock this part in a little bit. Um, again, hammer and chisel on this edge along here. And that would kind of bend this just a little bit more than 45 or a 90 and it would just you wouldn't even notice it and it would just take that corner in just a little bit there's a lot of ways to fix that so when I do the final lineup I'll probably do something to it once it's on the car but I'm gonna go ahead and finish it up the way it is because it's pretty it's in the ballpark that's all I'm looking for um, so this is gonna get welded up finished I'm going to have to go ahead and finish this video up right here, um, but at least you guys can see what you're looking at. Um, and then I'll bring you guys back in, back in some more work on these doors because I still need to do this whole bottom edge. There's a lot of work to do just on the front doors. So, the bottom edge. So, stay tuned. Come back and see that. I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe. Sorry about the background noise. We're having a subject done uh, on my other channel. I'm going to actually have a hyperlapse of that, hopefully. Yeah. Come on, be cool. All right, talk to you in the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe.